Calling the meeting to order. We have a uh, um, John. What's your last name again? Anhal. And so we have John Anhal and Gene Wall and Sebastian Gutwein here as part of the that's quorum for this meeting. Um, other people in attendance is uh, Jeff. Uh, Jeff Sauzer, is that how you, how you say it? Sauzer. Sauzer. Sauzer, yeah. And and Christian from the town. Um, who else is out there in the... My name is Denise Berry. Great. Uh, is there a reason you're here today? I have an issue with a uh, parking permit on Franklin Street and I'm being tremendously harassed by okay. the woman whose house I'm parking in front of. Right. Well, we'll put I, that on, on uh, public comment. Great. Um, and the other person in? I'm Anthony with the recorder. Okay, great. Thank you. All right. Um, so the first thing on today's agenda is a um, well the order which I didn't do so uh, if anyone's recording this uh, please notify the chairperson at this time Christian I believe you are right yeah and anyone sorry. else I am. and okay great And um, approval of minutes. So moved. So moved. Okay. Do we have a second? Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So everyone. Um, okay. So we can now move on to public comment of Franklin Street. Do you want to tell us your story? I'd like to tell you my story. Um, I live at 101 Franklin Street. And um, right now where my vehicle is parked, I have an assigned space and um, it's halfway under a tree, which is my car is being covered in bird droppings, like literally from one end to the other. So uh, I started parking it on the street across the street from my house in front of 100 through 102 Franklin Street, which is property owned by Lindsay Hendley. And since I started parking it there, she has been harassing me to the point that my health is in danger. I have a great deal of health issues and stress is one of the biggest triggers for a couple of them. I have, uh, I don't have a printer, so the only thing I have is this, and I have the screenshots and photos on my phone of what she has sent to me. Yeah, so you, I, so you sent those to, they reached me and I forwarded it to the you commission. You did get so them. So, okay. yeah. so she has, the latest thing she did today was whoever she was talking with, texting. She accidentally texted my twin sister over in Turner's Falls. The woman, whoever he, she was speaking with, asked her whether I was parking in a legal parking spot. And she said, yes, but there's other places she can park on the streets. Now, I came to, when she started harassing me, I came down and I got a permit for, for residential parking. I used to work at the town of Amherst, so I know a little bit about um, the process. And, you know, I don't know Greenfield's bylaws, but I looked up whether I need a parking permit to park on the street. As a resident, I'm allowed to park there. And um, she has progressively gotten more uh, brutal in her comments to me. Today, she, last night, I instead of park, she, she has a garden. Her entire yard is a garden. And she wants no one parking in front of that. And she also claims that where Chris and company, um, there used to be two parking spots that were two hour parking. She claims those were always reserved for Chris and company. I've been told there's never been any reserved parking. Her tenants park in front of those in, in those two spots, which is not a problem. 
Um, she pays for two spots at the church parking lot for her tenants as well. And she is expecting me to park down in her church parking lot spots, which I can't see my vehicle. And right now, the neighborhood has had several, the, the man in the unit next to me has had his car broken into several times. Not broken into, but gone through because it's been left unlocked. Um, the police were made aware of that last week. Um, so I want to park my vehicle in front across the street from my house where I can see it, where I know it's safe. It's locked up and it's safe. Nobody's going through it. I got up this morning at 6.30 and went to the hospital to have labs drawn. And by the time I came home, she had parked in the space that I was in. She had moved her vehicle. So I had to park in front of her garden. And then I went to use my restroom in my house this afternoon and she had backed her vehicle up to mine. So it was like three inches away from my front bumper. I called the police last Friday and the officer said he had things he needed to figure out and that he would get back to me. I haven't heard anything. I don't wanna take an order of harassment out against her because that is just going to make her even more cruel and harassing. She won't follow it. I simply want to be entitled to park where I am legally allowed to park without enduring the physical and emotional torture that this woman is putting me through. Um, thank you. Um, okay. Speak to the chair. Um, just so information wise, just a pure parking standpoint, the spaces we're talking about are a little about halfway up Franklin Street. Um, there's no signage of, associated with them. They are marked as parallel uh, parking spaces. Um, so for all intents and purposes, they are um, open for anyone to use to, by the public at any time for any reason, just like you could park legally on any side street in Greenfield, as long as there's no no parking sign. So anyone has the right to park there for whatever reason. Yeah, so, so you, you, you parking there is completely I'm, allowed. I'm, I'm really sorry to hear about your ordeal there. Um, Thank sounds, you. It sounds traumatic. Um, yeah, I think from from a legal perspective, you have every right to park on the street there. It's a it's a public it's public utility and it's it's open to, to everybody there's no and um, is there a way to legally for the town to notify her that she needs to cease and desist the harassment against me without my having to take an order of harassment against her not not that i'm aware of i think that's i think it becomes a um you know we there's not i don't think it's something that we have any jurisdiction over so yeah, park, park park, certainly. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I do think your your avenue with the police is probably the better the better route in this. Okay, because police have told me that they don't have any jurisdiction over it either. It, over well the over the harassment, I don't know, right? Because the, the parking the, that you have the parking already... issue itself, yes. He says yeah. they don't have any jurisdiction over that. But the harassment, right. I have to go to court and get and get yeah. an order of yeah, unfortunately, the, the, there's nothing that I'm aware of, and, and maybe, Kristen, you can look into this. Now, I'm aware of that the town can do in order, in a, was really a, a dispute between two people where, you know, you are, have every legal right, and someone else is um, is harassing you about that. So, you, I, I think coming to us to, to get clarification that you, that there, you have the legal right to be there is, is was one thing well, and this is, i have le i've done this legally the whole way through and i have not responded to her text messages i haven't responded to this note that she brought me saying that i was being selfish and um she has broken down to swearing at me and calling me names and i have not done that i have simply not responded and she's trashing my name all over the neighborhood. I am a good person. I am not vengeful, vengeful person. I'm not malicious. And 
I fear, you know, for the safety of my vehicle, even though I need to park it out there, I'm extremely low income and I can't afford to take it to the car wash and wash it every week. I get $1,000 a month in disability. I can't afford it. So this is, this is my solution right now is parking on the street. This tree that I park under has grown. I've been in this apartment seven years and now it's, it's overhanging my car. It, I don't want my landlord involved. I don't want, you know, I just want the harassment to stop. And I want her to understand that anyone can park in those spaces, that none of those spaces are reserved for her park property. They're, they're not reserved for her tenants. They're not reserved for her. They're not reserved for her aid. Uh, and there's always park, people parked in there so that, that no one else can access them that, that are in her house. Jim, do you have a comment? Well, I actually had a couple of comments. Um, I, I, I apologize for being late. Um, my understanding was uh, that, that the birds had built a nest, but it wasn't clear to me that it was a nest in a tree or in a garage. Uh, is... They're in a tree over the, over the driveway where I park. I have an assigned parking spot in the driveway and it overhangs half of my vehicle and it's the driver's side. And I went out on May yeah. 4th and it was covered from one end to the other. I don't leave my house a lot because of my disability. This meeting for me to come to was is a tremendous stress. My sister was going to come and she canceled, and I, I am here. I'm shaking. I, I have no blood flow to my fingers because of the stress, but I'm here because I have a right as a citizen in this town to to park here until the situation clears up. Whether that goes through fall or not, I can put my vehicle back in the parking lot in the driveway and see if this lets up. But if it doesn't, and I have to continue to, to take my car to the car wash, I have a right to park on the street. And I think that it's not unreasonable that I do that wherever there is a space available. And, you know, her claim is that um, I'm ruining her plans for a tag sale on Memorial Day. She wants to put up a flower stand on her property and her grandchildren want to do a lemonade stand on Memorial Day as well. I'm not going to park there then. I'm not. Yeah, I'll find yeah. some else to put my vehicle so yeah. that's not blocking it. But yeah. Does anyone else have any uh, comments on this? Yeah, I, I, I had a couple of more comments. Um, first of all, I think I think it's it's appropriate for parking and traffic to send a letter to this person reminding her that the street is public. And that um, there are no re reserved spaces. It's first come, first serve, and that's that. Um, I, you know, I, I think that that reminder, especially coming on city letterhead, might um, be useful. Uh, the the other thing that occurs to me is, and I know you don't want to talk to your landlord, but um, that might be a thing to. Well, do. she's already spoken to my landlord, and he was mm -hmm. he's very angry at me about this well, because she's I, involved in. Uh, I, I understand, but but the landlord may be able to put in some sort of bird prevention devices in that section of the tree, so that the birds have a disincentive to uh, roost there. Um, and those things are not necessarily very expensive, but I, I you know, but frankly, I think a uh, a letter um, from the city um, and maybe even signed by the uh, city's attorney. Um, might help her understand that with respect to the spaces, um, you know, she can't she can't do what she's claiming to do. She also mentioned that she rents two spaces at the church down the street. Yes, she does. The church rents spaces, especially for winter parking off street when yeah. when we have storms. So she pays two hundred dollars a year for two parking spaces down at the church for her tenants. And she's telling me to use them instead. Well, I, I mean th th that's okay. I mean, I looked on the map, and it's it's a bit of a hike, but you know that may be a, a way to deal with it in the interim. Um, but that's that's just a thought, and I'm I'm sorry for the the pain that has been inflicted on you. 
Anybody else have any comments? John? Yeah. I, um, if we send a letter, it should simply just state what the ordinance laws are that are applicable to this. That's the simplest way to do it, rather than try and get a, you know, a city attorney's opinion. Just say these are the applicable ordinances and say that. No, no, no. I, you don't want an opinion from an attorney. You want a signature. That's all you want. You know, just restating that these are the ordinances, and um, you know. Uh, okay, I didn't understand mind. your comment. Sorry. Pardon. Okay. Um, and anyone else? So, um, we have we have kind of a proposal out there that would say sending a letter to this uh, address, presumably. Um, and what it would say that a citizen approached us about um, a some a dispute about parking on the street, and we wanted to just clarify on their behalf the uh, ordinances. Is that, is that what we're thinking of saying? Yeah, signed yeah. by an attorney, which just right. Gives, but gives, we can we can see whether or not that is possible. Christian can look into that. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, me, me and you can work on that. Uh... Sebastian, okay. and, and if attorney doesn't work, it could come from you on behalf of the parking traffic commissioner, something similar. Yeah, definitely. Thank you very much. Sorry that you're going through this. You know, I've, I've had a very difficult. Denise, are you um, okay with that as a- I am, I am. I As long as she is, notified in some legal manner that what she's doing is is against the law you know that she's violating she's not against i'm not saying against the law but she's violating the city codes by what she's doing yeah. i'm i'm so fine with we're, that. we're not just to be clear we're not saying that we're because what she's doing it, what she's doing is harassing you right but right. we're saying that you're not violating the city codes right i'm exactly i'm not violating anything and yeah. she's aware of that because she sent this text message to my sister this afternoon saying, no, it's a legal parking spot. She could just park somewhere else. Right. So I think, I think that's the. Um, so, you know, I, and I will follow up with the police if she continues to harass me and, and, uh, you know, I don't want to have to though, because this woman is extremely volatile. That's all I'm. I'm gonna say, and she's she's extremely volatile, and I don't want to. I don't want anything to happen to to other people in the neighborhood, and I just, I, you know, I spend ninety percent of my time at home, and I'm sorry that I have to park my car in the street so that when I go out, it's it, you know, I don't have to go to the car wash first. Yep, it seems seems like a reasonable solution. Um, I'm sorry that you're in that situation. Thank I you hope very that much. Uh, it improves. So do you need uh, anything else we... from me as far as what I've sent you for records? Should if I get any other? I, I don't think I don't think we need any records. We're not going to be referring to anything. We're just going to say we just wanted to make you aware of what the law is, so that that is clear. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. I appreciate Thank it. You. Do you need me to stay for the, the rest of the meeting, or do you want? Yeah. Any... Do I need to give you any information or do you have uh, that for my email? I have your email, your okay. name. Um, Thank you very much, all of you. I appreciate yeah. it. Have Thank a good you. Night. All right, on to the next part. Here we go. <laughs> um, it doesn't look like we have any new business. Um, so the next thing would be um, Old business developing priorities to determine how to implement the 2023 parking study recommendations. Um, so we left that last time. Um, and Kristen, you were going, you have your uh, spreadsheet, right? We could go look through. Yeah, so um, yeah, we left it with two kind of things to look into the the revenues at the parking lots because um, mm -hmm. you guys wanted to know what the revenues were before you made any uh, decisions surrounding them um, and then also where people that use downtown parking permits are uh, pay parking um, I've collected the data on that 
I have not had a chance to parse it and make it presentable. Um, but I did go out and do exactly what I said, figured out which numbers are where. I have a spreadsheet of the where the who what company purchased those permits, so we can theoretically figure out where they're parking and how far they're walking. If that's so you guys thought that information would be useful, I don't have it yet though. But I do have the revenue data for the city parking lots um, for the time period of the previous year to today, um, which I can share. Uh, if that would be helpful. Um, so this is the revenues uh, from 521-2023 to 520-2024. Um, this is only city parking lots. And I was able to get the data from the kiosks, so people paying with coins or card at the kiosk, as well as the passport revenue, passport being the city's parking app. So that's all the methods anyone could possibly have to pay to park in these lots um, besides having a parking permit. So the sum of those two is the total revenue for those uh, lots and the garages on here as well. Uh, so Ames Street is around 5,700. Legion and Miles are kind of weird cases. Miles is mostly currently labeled as solely permit parking during the 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. hours. There's five spaces way down in the corner that are labeled as uh, paid parking and have a parking kiosk. Um, they're not frequently used. As you can see, almost no one parks down there. They do generate a small amount of revenue. Uh, the Legion lot, there was a small rev amount of revenue generated um, when the kiosk was there. Um, but then at some point, probably last summer, it looks like that kiosk got taken out. The lot is going to be getting repaved this summer. Or I anticipate, I think it's going to be this summer. It, it received capital funding to get repaved. Um, so that will be happening and the kiosk would be returned. Um, but right now there's no kiosk, so there's no way for people to pay. So it's not really generating revenue. Uh, the city hall parking lot um, generated 4,100. That's mainly the section closest to city hall. The rest of it is labeled as permit parking. Uh, the Chapman Davis parking lot, also known as the economy lot over behind the former Wilson's building. The city's portion back there is generated 11,000. Uh, the garage does not have kiosks this past year. Um, it's been passed for only. So all the revenue is generated solely through the app and that has generated 26,700 um, for a total of 48,425 coming from city parking lots. Um, so yeah, it, this data is available to you guys if you're making decisions about increasing or decreasing the prices in the parking lots and want to know how much of an effect that would have. So, um, do we know, just out of curiosity, what the debt burden is on the, the garage? Like, the, like the, the city's, term? the city's like payments for the yeah. funding part? I, I do not know that. Gene, yeah. do you, do you know that? No, I don't think I've ever known that, yet, but okay. it would be, if there's somebody to research it, it's whatever we bonded it for. Right. Yeah. Okay. And and so and this this is just the the amount generated through passport. There's also the garage specific permits, which are sold for thirty five dollars a month. Those also generate revenue for the garage, as do the parking permits uh, for these other lots where the there's parking permit specific spaces. Well, thank you, Christian. This is this is great great information. Um, Does this include permits? So this does not include permits because um, people with permits could park in any spaces labeled as permit spaces. So they could um, park in any of these lots. So it's going to be hard to break it down. Do we know if outside of that, do we know the total uh, number of permits or amount from permits? Uh, I can pull that up. Um, I can give a super ballpark figure though. Yeah, that's good. Calculate real quick. I believe we have around 250 permits out there. It might be more. Um, that's just the number that's floating in my head. Those are $350 annually. So that's 87,500 if you multiply those two together. Um, there's no bulk discounts or anything. Jeff, you have a comment? Yeah. Uh, I think one way to help analyze this, and Christian, you might have this information, is to just to get a feel for the relative 
either value to the community or revenue value to the city of the spaces in these different lots. You could analyze them a bit like you would a hotel. So you, you look at the revenue per space and the revenue per available space. So we might not have the utilization data to know. And so the revenue per available space in a hotel is just how much, what's your revenue divided by the number of total rooms? And then the other metric is revenue divided by occupied rooms. So just, it's, they would help us kind of compare these to see, well, the Ames lot, because you know these are different size lots, they have different numbers of spaces that kind of makes it harder to know if we're looking at apples and apples or apples and oranges. So that'd be pretty easy, right? We just add a column for number of spaces, divide that by the total revenue. And then we we have the number of, we have the number of hours, we could calculate the number of hours that um, is available for parking, paid parking, and and the rate that it's at, and we could get a what potential income is, right? And see what the differential is there. Yeah, especially if you're looking for lots that are maybe more or less central to people's daily lives, more or less, people would miss them more or less if they went away or changed in some way. Um, so the, the reason that we talked about this, right, Christian, was uh, um, because we were talking about whether or not we should be changing the rates in the, in the lots. <laughs> That's correct. Um, I did do one other thing in between the, the two meetings. Um, I I put together a really short list of, I think, some really logical things to start with as you're discussing implementing the parking study, um, kind of thinking about it, looking at that parking map that I had to put together and looking at how complicated it truly is to lay this out for people and kind of working backwards from that, like how, how can we make this map simpler and yeah making the map simpler is also making it easier for people to park. So I could share that if you'd like. Yeah. Jeff, do you have any thoughts about simplicity over uh, simplicity and in, in parking uh, amounts versus uh, different payment amounts? You mean like different rates for different lots? Yeah. It, it, is, it, is a, is a, is a simple map. It is a, simple set of rates better than a more complicated set of rates that we're trying to think about uh, uh, controlling parking or uh, manipulating parking uh, behavior. I mean, the main thing is that there's a consistent way to pay for it. That would be the first thing. Cause like, if you're just parking on a daily basis, you might not care so much about what the rate is. A, Cause you're not, it's, it's a matter of quarters that you're paying. But you, know, you need a, I think you need a reason to make it more complicated. And otherwise you should make it simpler by default, just remove friction and complexity and confusion. My question would be the, that we should put a value on the permit only places because yeah. a large part of city hall is permit only and it's mostly permit on. I mean, and those are not generating very much money at all if you're analyzing it on the 350 of, a year is all the revenue we get from them. And, and is that the way we should be doing this? One thing I took from the, the parking study is you don't necessarily want to think of managing parking as trying to ge generate as much revenue as possible. I, although that is obviously the city needs revenue, um, but you do want to think of it as kind of uh, how much revenue do we need to generate to um, manage this parking as as effectively as we can, um, and, and so and sometimes those two things line up. And to pay for the parking garage. And to pay and to pay because for this. To me, the people who park in the city need to be paying for the parking garage versus the little old lady who lives somewhere and doesn't ever come into town and park anywhere. Yeah. So I do. I think I have an answer on the garage. I googled it real quick. Found a twenty seventeen Mass Live article that said it was. It was 10 million total, 2.5 million was local bond. So at least mm -hmm. seven years ago, it looks like the original bond was 2.5 million. And is there, is there a uh, length on that bond? No, I didn't say. It's just a Mass Live article, but it's a start. Yep. I, mean, I, know, I know the debt service. I'm, we had that number at one point. I don't remember it, yeah. 
Um, I, yeah, I, I presume it's in the in the city budget in some way, right? We really look that up. Huh. Jane, or do I, do I see a hand up? No, I don't. It, it, it's hard for me to see. Yeah. Uh, um, Christian, do you want to pull up the map or? Uh, can I make a, a comment first? Yeah. I think I think Jeff was right that the fundamental issue was occupancy, and you know, uh, unlike a, a hotel, there's not much you can do with the occupancy of parking because it's such short term, and <coughs> I, you know, I mean, the occupancy rates are just have appear to be incredibly low, and is there anything that can be done? Not necessarily to to shift the deck, uh, shift the chairs on the deck of the Titanic, but rather to encourage people to, um, you, you know, consolidate into you know uh, uh, fewer lots so that you you know and and in, in effect fly fewer airplanes to get your load factor up. Yeah, so I think I think the people still complain about not being able to find parking, right? even though we know that the utilization is low. Um, and then, so, and Jim, I think it's, it's, it's also tricky, right? Cause it's, it's, it might be low most of the time, but during some crunch time and that's a problem. So I think, I think it's a little tricky to figure that out. I, I think the parking study does a good job of looking at that, but. Um, Christian, can you pull the map up so we can just look at the, the map and the rates? Sure. Uh, I do have it written out, um, what okay. I changed first, um, just so it's not immediately uh, looking at the map. Um, so the changes that I made on the map um, that would reflect a potential future reality was to remove the time limits on the city's parking lots. That was explicitly a recommendation in the parking study. Um, this was not a recommendation in the parking study necessarily, although I haven't looked at that section of their recommendation recently, but it would be to change the pleasant lot. This, there's a city portion of it. There's another part that's privately owned from permit to free. I keep an eye on that lot very often because it is the least utilized parking lot in Greenfield by far. I have checked consistently, I don't even know, over a dozen times. There's usually one car parked there. Yeah. And it's, I don't know how many number of spaces it has. It's 20 plus spaces. I don't think there's any reason for it to be labeled as permit. It could easily be free. It's very far from downtown comparatively to everything else. You guys had previously discussed having some kind of free parking lot to, for us to point to. Um, I think that could potentially be it. And it would also be good for the John Zahn Center when they have an overflow if mm -hmm. they could yeah. go here. Yep. Um, that sounds another good. one would be to convert the Mile Street parking lot um, from 50 cents to 25 cents. Right now it's just those five spaces, but this would be in tandem with um, this last thing that I came up with and you guys had previously discussed at your last meeting, which would be to kind of remove the specific spots for city parking permits and make it so that anyone with a city parking permit can just park in a city parking lot. There's no designated spaces within a lot for them. Uh, I did a little bit of on the ground research on this. The main culprit for this is the Ames Street lot. There's it, the bulk of it is permit parking, but there's one row of um, paid parking. Permit parkers are parking there anyway. Um, it might as well just be an entirely city regular old lot with no labels. That's how it is right now. Um, this will make it easier for people to park with a permit. It will be less confusing for people coming in looking to just stay at a kiosk. They want to figure out what space do I need to go into. Um, I did talk with Kelly Verner, who's the city's treasurer. Um, she's been with the city longer than I have. She's in charge of selling the parking permits. I asked her, are there any red flags to this idea? And she didn't have any off the top of her head. I wouldn't hold her to that if something else comes up in the future, but um, that was kind of the main big change here that it, uh, I think could be a really easy change to make. Um, so this is what the map looks like given these changes.
So you can see the City Hall lot and Ames lot are still 50 cents. Legion, Chapman Davis, and newly Miles would be 25 cents. All Street Garage is still 40 cents. Pleasant Street lot is now free as opposed to being labeled as permit parking. And if you look back at the old map, there was all these having to divide the lots up into how much is permit, how much is mm. regular parking. And now if you implement that change where the you can park anywhere, any city parking lot with a parking permit, you don't have to really account for that anymore. And it, it really cleans it up. And I think makes it easier for people to understand yeah. what it means to park in Greenfield as well as removing the time limits. And then meters will stay on Main Street to keep and permit people from parking there, right? Correct. Yeah. So in, in this version, the meters are still on Main Street. There's still two hour limit. The meters are still on the side streets. They're four hour limit. And then when you get into the parking lots, there's no limit. Um, so it kind of cascades from very short time frame, medium, long term. So I, I I have one concern about this, and, and if we let people with permits just park in any of the lots, wouldn't that also get away with any time limits? So, so my concern would just be that, you know, a bunch of people park in City Hall lot all day, and it's full. You know, like if you have a permit, you can park wherever as long as you want. It, 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 doesn't, it doesn't manage that aspect of it. So I don't know if we would still need a, a time limit on those spots or something. Just go. So, wait, so can you repeat it to prevent what? So uh, you're saying that uh, pe people with permit could park in any lot spot, whether there's a meter or not. That, that was the suggestion, correct? Yep. Um, does a time limit still apply? So right now, at least for like City Hall and Ames, the bulk of it is already labeled as permit only 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Um, and so people can be parked there all day anyway. Okay. In the current reality, so this wouldn't that wouldn't really be a change. There's no okay. Time limit but, but, there. Uh, I right. think your Understood. your concern is correct in that the the city the Ames lot and the city hall lot are the most popular lots, right? So if there's no time limit, they're likely to fill up and not have that kind of like, hey, I just need to pop into the courthouse into the city hall to do something, right? So, um, it could be that that the road that you're talking about there, Christian, that's the, that's currently just not permit in both of those, those could be four hour spots. Mm -hmm. So they keeps the, the, the turnover happening in there. To keep a small section as I'm limited. Yes, or, exactly. or we tell permit people where they cannot park versus telling the public where they can't park. Well, I, th I still think you'll have you know people not uh, you if 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 the lots one of the benefits of having those if there's a if there's a benefit to having some portion of those lots have turnover so that people can get in and out of there right oh I need to stop in for an hour um then then that would uh, change that if there's enough on street parking then that's not a problem right. Because that's where you would have your your turnover. Jeff, do you have a comment? I was along similar lines. I think the thirty minute spots behind City Hall are really effective, and Please. also the fifteen minute spots in front of some of the restaurants. I mean, that's I think that's many people that come downtown. Your point at Boston are there for five minutes to just drop something off, or I do that, drop something yeah. off at my business, or run into a restaurant or whatever, and it's really annoying to have to pull out your phone and pay for five cents of so, so, but Jeff, those the I was looking at this the other day. The 15 minute spots they stay metered. That you need you should be paying for that 15 minutes currently, which doesn't seem right to me personally. I, I guess if you want turnover, you, you could have just a handful of spots that are dedicated for turnover only. Yeah. And and it's free because it's just a few minutes. I mean, forty eight thousand dollars in parking revenue is not worth any the point of the parking is to make coming downtown easier, make living in Greenfield, working in Greenfield, enjoying Greenfield easier. And, and the revenue just, maybe it's enough to pay for the debt on the, the garage, but it's not, you know, the, the city's primary financial operation. So and think about the behaviors people have. If there's people that, if there's a critical mass of people that need to come in for 30 minutes or less to do stuff, make, make it that very easy for them so that the city can run 
smooth and I don't think you need that many spaces to provide for them. And then the rest of them can just be permit slash whatever else. Uh, Christian, do you have your hand up? Yeah, so there, Jeff's completely right. There are a few 30 minute spaces behind City Hall. I, I, I forgot to add the label on here, but uh, I was visioning those as staying. Um, either not putting the label on here or then people get there and they, they see them and get used to them. It doesn't necessarily have to be on the map, but I would also agree, yeah, let's definitely not get rid of those. Well, shouldn't that whole lot be 30? I mean, shouldn't that whole lot be non-permit because they can park in the park next to the church? I, I, I think of that as one whole big lot with different sections that are... I know, but I'm trying to say that if you're coming here for a meeting, the 30 minute only does not work. Yeah. So therefore, what do we do about that? And if you kept that little mini lot behind City Hall for meeting people and that kind of people and say to permit people, you can't park here, mm -hmm. but you can park in the other lot. I mean, I, I'm just saying yeah. it's easier to tell permit people where they cannot park than it is to tell somebody trying to come to City Hall whether they can or cannot park by that gets confusing. Yeah. 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 Think, think it over. You're, you're right. If people, permit people got really used to taking those spaces, they would not be available. Right. So, right. so that's a very specific section of a very specific lot. But yeah, I think, right. I think you are correct. Yeah. Um, so that's interesting. So we could we could say, you know, we could we wouldn't maybe we would say you can park in ninety percent of the right. of the spot of the spots in the lots, right? As it with a permit permit. Um or 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 do we just the Gene, the the little the little one behind the city hall there, which is not for permit currently, is that a two hour lot or is it an indefinite time lot? It, it's got one of those kiosks there. Okay. It's Four hours. Four but, hours. But it, you know, four hours is fine. Yeah. But, but you need to notify permit people that they can't park there with a permit. Yeah. Because that's easily, you can see that they have a permit and they're parked there. Yeah. So, so, I, I think Gene, Gene is absolutely right. The permit people, you know who they are. You know how to communicate with them, and you can say you can park anywhere you want except, and yeah. you know, and and that I think is the cleanest way because other people you don't know who they are, you don't know when they're going to be there, you don't know how to communicate with them. Uh, but I think Gene's Gene's idea of uh, notifying the permit parkers where they can't um, use their permits is um, the easiest the easiest fix I think. So we, I mean, otherwise we could say you could park anywhere, but we we could leave the four hour limits in some places, right? Sure. If we're going to stay with the four hour limits in that part, I don't, I mean, behind City Hall, I think we need the four hour limits so you can come to meetings and they generally are not four hours. I know it's it's inconvenient, but um, you know some of the meetings that are held there. What about having a a temporary permit for the meeting? You know, and you just you hand these things out. They expire uh, when the meeting expires, or at the end of that particular day, and that's that. Well, the the people can now park it if they can park in the permit. What is now permit only lot? If there are empty spaces then they would have another choice or they could go to City Hall. We just need to reserve the 30 minute and the, I mean, that's my vision of how it should all be. Yeah, so, okay. So I'm, I, I have another, I can't really go past seven uh, again today. So um, I, I feel like Christian, this is a really great proposal. It sounds like we're we um so can we look at can you go back to the spreadsheet so we can talk about each one of those things individually? Yeah, the revenues. 
Uh, no, the one where you, you where you bulleted bulleted out your the oh, pages. Oh. oh, wait, it's not sharing. So the first one from this discussion, it seems like there's some hesitancy about fully removing the time limits on, in parking lots, right? That we still would want to definitely, definitely still would want to keep the 30 minute spots, right? In some. And 15 minutes. Well, I think the 15 minutes are, yeah, if there's any 15 minutes, but yeah, I, think I think those are only on the street. Yeah. Um, and maybe on, on Ames, change the same, some of those to 30 minutes. So there's some turnover there because I think for people who are, I think for people who are. There was a big lightning bolt, maybe it hit. Josh's house. If it was electrical, you wouldn't be able to see him. It's frozen. That was the last frame we got. And that means that we're only for Jim Parker's number and the people. So, which is the current reality is the best way to do it. And the Jim Wayne thing, but yeah, it's just a certain amount of it's time to switch out the way to do it. I guess the one thing I'm going to do is to have a big assembly or kind of decision on is making the assembly. And then one person parts out with the apartment and have a little bit of a color rise. Actually, it feels like it's a little bit of a chance to do it in the middle of the world. It's a little bit of a chance to do it in the middle of the I don't, I don't think I need a motion yet yeah, since it's so kind of small so good. And so I think once you have a offer for maybe several dollars, did you want to make your app? We have a motion. But this is that we're going to write I don't know. I don't know why you're smiling. Your mouth is filled with marbles. We can't understand you at all. Oh. <laughs> I can't say anything. I'm 
Hi, sorry, sorry, I uh, lost y'all. There's a lightning, there's a lightning mm -hmm. flash, and then uh, did, did we did we end the meeting or what? Yeah. Okay. Great. See y'all.